So this is an age-old way of preservation, and I really like the taste of it and enjoy doing it a whole lot. Howdy, folks. This is Justro at Metcalf Mills, and yeah, today I'm bringing you Fun Fact Friday because this day and time, facts are hard to come by. Like last week, I had to factor the Fun Fact Friday into all the fun we was having this week. We've been putting up beans and pepper, and one head of cabbage got put up too. I'm going to show you some ways that my family's used to preserve things for a lot of years and a lot of other people here in the mountains of Appalachia. It's the good old ways, and I love to share what I know about it. And as always, if you got something to share, please don't hold back. Because there's been so many blessings come through these comments back to me. And I really appreciate that. And I know everybody else does too. The fun fact today is going to be what a pepper looks like when it gets mad at you. Yeah, that's it. I got a hot-tempered banana pepper I'm going to introduce you to. So stick with me. Now this first little jag is me and Charlotte going to the garden to pick pepper and if you get motion sickness I'm gonna go ahead and warn you you might want to close your eyes because she don't have smooth videography skills just yet but you can close your eyes and listen because her commentary it's pretty entertaining. I'm recording so I'm Charlotte I'm at Virginia. Virginia's my sis I call him I call her Sissy, so here's Bear, oh my goodness, oh my gosh, here's Bear, I'm recording it, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful sunset, I'm recording it too. Some more little red cayennes. There. See what you're doing. Get away from my pepper, you dead. <laughs> Our pepper. I like my pepper too. Don't you, Char? I like the sweet pepper. He's right here's cayennes. They're hot as a pistol, bro. It's a big old jet, ain't it? Look how close it is. Big old jet. Is that a jet? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's an airplane. Well, it is, but it's a jet. A jet's a big airplane. Oh. Call a big old airplane. All right, there's that. that. There's another red one right there. Here's some pretty red. Look here. The sunset's pretty pops. Now here, this is hot banana. <laughs> They're yellow. They're like a yellow. Worm eat this plant up. <laughs> Don't you look? Son of a gun's come back and eat the side out of our pepper. Oh. I hope it burn them up. There they go down the river. Look at how loaded this pepper is. Look how loaded it is. We're gonna pickle this, Char. Mm hmm Gonna be pickled pepper. There's hot bananas. Well, I can smell them too. Mm. You can smell the heat. They are see ya. Right down here beside me. You can smell the heat. Is that better, Pops? That's good. And you slow enough. Okay. I think that was it. As long as you're moving slow to where it won't make them sick on the screen. Moving so fast, flying. Around. <laughs> I 
These are hot bananas. So pink and beautiful. Their house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Pops. Look at him, girl. Oh my gosh. <coughs> I'm recording how many there is, Pops. Okay. So I can see how many there is. far away from the stream. See, it looks far away, but it's not. It's like one step for a giant to get there. Huh? Like one step to get here from the garden. What it looks like? To get from the garden to get from the house. To get to the house. Oh my gosh, so many clams. Hot banana, yeah. And bananas. Cayenne is all red. <laughs> yeah, there's so many cayennes and bananas. I appreciate you filming this for me. Yeah, anytime. Everybody else will too. <laughs> I think Sissy enjoys it. Yeah. Oh, bug. Bug. Make sure you focus on what you're doing and hold it real still. These things is loaded. These are my little work crocs. Huh? These are my little work crocs. Your little work crocs? Yeah. They're dirty now, so that's why I made them work crocs. Yeah, they get dirty when you use them a lot, don't they? Yeah. Those icky store floors and all that stuff. Yeah. Jeez, I want to get new ones. They're not going to be so workish. Like we'll get you can. some next time we go out. If they have some. I can't remember where I well, got it them. It ain't getting in the season for Crocs, but maybe they will. Do you know who I went with when I got these? Who? G-Ma. Oh, really? G-Ma's my ev aunt, everybody. I call it G-Ma, my aunt G-Ma, because all the cousins do, and I just, me and Sissy called her Aunt Tammy, and... I want to join the cousins, so that's why I call her Chima now. I am so lucky. <laughs> I got pineapple dress. They have so little pineapples. And they're so cute. They're colorful, and there is some yellow ones. My God, but... Hey. I can't believe we have pineapples, and I got a pineapple dress. Really? That's crazy. We what got about that? Pineapples for real. What and we I got, got right here. Look here. Look dress. here. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So pretty. Yeah. That one counts, I guess. Well, I love them big old bells. Ooh, look at the purple flowers. No, doing a little bit. Over here, be careful, don't trip on that stall, right brother. Over here, it's right here. Stop. This is the sweet banana peppers. I want to keep them separate. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stay right there. Okay. Like I said, it looks fine. What I'm going to do to keep these sweet banana pepper and hot banana pepper separate, see here, is I'm just going to take these collard leaves. I'm just going to lay them over top of them hot bananas. And what that's going to do is keep, is them, keep them separate. Mm -hmm. 
so my hot and my sweet won't get mixed together. And it will taste like new. There we go. All right, let me oh. move right over here. It'll taste like everything at the same time. Oh, yeah, watch out for this post. Yeah. You want, oh, look. We want our sweet and our hot separate because oh. you and Sissy might be wanting to eat some of the sweetens and yens can't eat them. Oh, oh. They just can't eat them if they got hot in with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be careful on that stob. You get hurt. I'm a shit. That you didn't know. Oh, I was I bet dancing. You took a ride on the camera there. Yeah. And you done that? Oh, well, I passed your ride. Uh -huh. That was just drip. Pops, is that bell peppers? Where at? Right there. That's, that big green one's a bell. Uh, bell now, these peppers. These are sweet banana right here that we're getting. Ready. Sweet? Sweet banana. Yeah. They're not spicy. Now they're sweet. Yay! Not hot. Oh, I think I see bear down here. I don't know. Huh? So I think I see bear down here. I don't know. Start guarding everybody. So beautiful. Beautiful. Watch out, everybody. Look at these two branches. Ah, oh, tweet, tweet. Oh. They have a crunch texture to them. Look at these blueberries. I can see them. They're not blueberries. You can't see them very good. But still, they look like blueberries, but they're just. They're like, yeah. It's odd, they're spiky. Please. All right, that's about all the peppers. That's big enough. It's getting dark. Oh, well, we got another picking of miters here, a side of them. Uh, Let's uh, see. Oh. I guess that's about it for now. All right, Pops. Well, thank you for showing everybody that's going to watch good. this. Even my friend that Xavier at that school. Even Pop. though what? Um, I said... I said, even though my friend Xavier at school watches our YouTube videos. Who That's does? what he said one time. Who does? Xavier. Oh, really? That old boy. Well, what about that? Here we got our big pickling crock. I'm going to dip these top beans off here. And these are just cooked till they turn an olive color. They lose their dark green. They're not cooked long at all. Just, just long enough to change the color of them. That's all. And they're still real firm. And it ain't even breaking them apart when I'm scooping them out of here. But they're still a little bit warm, so I'm gonna put them in this crock, and I'm gonna let them cool in there for a while, and then I'm gonna pour my brine in on them after. Like I said, they've been drained. We don't wanna, they still got a little water in the bottom of the pan, so that's why I'm taking it slow and not getting down to that water in the bottom. As 
just like that. Yeah. I've dropped two beans so far and I'm gonna get them up and wash them off and eat them. Right there they are. That's an eight gallon crock, so it's right about half full. So we got about four gallons of beans there. Say, wouldn't you like to have that crock full, Justro? Well, yeah, I'd like to have it full. But that's just all we can manage today. Like I said, that's four gallons, so. That ain't nothing to sneeze at, is it? Four gallon of pickled beans. Now, I'm just gonna take a piece of cloth, put it over top of it. We ain't put the brine in or nothing. We're just gonna just gonna put this down over it to seal it off. And that's the handiest thing to seal a crock that I know of. I got these big old rubber bands. Boy, they're big ones, and they pull that thing down there tight. And you can tighten it up like that and get all them wrinkles out. And that's tight, tight as a drum. And ain't no bugs can get in there. One little gnat gets in there and your whole crock's ruined. So you have to be extra careful with that. I'm just going to let them sit in there for a little while. Till they cool off good. And then I'm going to pour the brine right in on them.
and chop this cabbage up real fine. And I put a little cannon pickling salt down in the bottom of this this churn crock. Now I'm just gonna spread my cabbage around. layer about an inch, inch and a half thick. And the rate of salt you want to sprinkle in here is a half a cup of salt per gallon of chopped cabbage. I'm just gonna just gonna salt that layer. Sprinkle salt over that layer there. Put another layer in. I like to spread it around the outside edge first. You can tell how deep you've got it. And then you just come back and fill the middle in. That seems to work real good for me. You can take that cup. I like that cup because you can take it and kind of pack your crowd a little bit. Another layer of salt, just sprinkle it all around. a little bit over a gallon of chopped kraut here so I'm going to put a little bit more salt in on top here put it on top and it'll kind of work its way down as long as that top's getting covered where it's going to need to be down underneath the bit on there that I might like to get off. Smooth it out nice and flat because now we are going to tamp it down, pack it a little bit. After we put a tad bit more salt in.
I got just the stuff for out of my meat, my meat grinder. I'm just going to take that real quick and just tamp that cabbage down real good. about making crowd it'll make its own it will make its own water you don't have to add water to it it's already making some in that pan there a minute ago where I had it so we're gonna pack that down good and tight where it's all nice and tight I'm gonna take a little saucer plate. It ain't hardly big enough. It's the only one I got that'll fit down in there. And one of my subscribers, bless her heart, she got me these uh, crock weights. And I'm just gonna put one of them down in there on each side of that plate. And what I'm gonna do tomorrow, after it gets daylight, so I'm going to go down to the grapevine and get me some grape leaves. And I'll take that out and I'll put them grape leaves down on top of that kraut. And then I'll put the plate on top of that and that'll hold it down, see. Now what the cloth that I'm going to put over top of this, it's going to be just a white pillowcase. And I'm just going to lay it down there like that. And I'm going to take this big rubber band I got. It's about three quarters of an inch wide. Big old rubber bands. They work real good, like I said earlier, for putting on cloth on the top of a crock or a churn jar. Because they hold that cloth. You can work with it and get all the wrinkles out. Because if you ain't careful, them little gnats will crawl up and under there. If they can find a wrinkle to get through. And they'll get in there and they'll ruin you. You got to make sure them little devils can't get in there. You pull that down nice and tight where there ain't no wrinkles whatsoever on that top there. Just like that. So you can work with it and you can get every one of them out where there ain't a wrinkle one on that band on that rim of that rim of that crock. And you got it. You just take that and set it in a cool place. Of course, I'm going to take this off in the morning. Take that plate and them weights out. And I'm going to put my grape leaves down on top of that kraut. And that's why Mother always, she done that with her pickled beans. We usually don't do kraut in a crock like this. We do it in the jar. And I'll be showing you that a little later on. So I got my crock of pickled beans, my kraut, my two buckets of pepper here, hot and sweet banana. And it's just now midnight. And this day, today, was a good day. It was good signs. The signs was right for pickling and fermenting. So I'm thankful to get all this done. My pick, my pickles, my pickles. It's after midnight, I'm tired. I've been working all day, getting beans ready and everything. But anyway, ugh. my peppers will be transitioned into pickling state in the morning. So I'm hoping this is getting them started and I started them in the right signs. We'll see. My cabbage was a little bit, it had laid a few days. I'm hoping it'll be all right. You know, you, there's always a risk of losing something, but I'm hoping not. And I'll talk more about the signs and what I what I done and why I done it later.
So this brine mixture in here, I mixed that up this morning early and put it in there before yuns got up. And what that is, is a gallon of water, a cup of white vinegar, and a cup of cannon pickling salt, and you bring it up, get it real hot, not boiling, but get it good and hot. Mix it up real good and just pour it right in on your beans. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my grape leaves and I'm gonna lay them right here on top of my beans. And you can place them around there to where they kinda, you can fit them in to where they kinda cover. Lay them just right to where they'll cover up in beans. Usually about four big ones will get you around the outside edge. Then you can, sometimes I'll tear one and two down the stem and use that to lay in place where the big leaves didn't cover. Just like that right there. And they go right over to the edge I like them to be tied up against the edge of that crock so that they'll hold them beans down. Go right up against the edge of it. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to put us a... I got a big platter that I'll put down right over that. What that'll do is it'll hold them beans down. Hold them down under the brine. It's a big platter right here. It fits nearly just right. And I'll put it right there. Mash it down and see if we're going to need a weight on it. Don't want to mash them too far. There's a lot of air bubbles coming out. We'll get all them out. Mash it down just like that. And if you lay a rock on, that's traditionally what they done was they laid a flint rock. You better make sure it's a flint rock because I've laid a granite on there. And I don't know if it's the iron and the granite or what, but I had to pour a whole crock of beans out one time because that granite rock, it was kind of a metallic had kind of a metallic taste my beans did and uh they ruined it just ruined them that big old heavy plate there it looks like it's going to do a good job of holding that down and a lot of times if you don't have a a flint rock you can take you just a plastic ziplock and Fill it up with water, make sure it don't leak. Lay it right down on top there, and that'll hold them good. I just filled up a little bag, a little sandwich bag, and make sure it ain't leaking. See, turn it up there, make sure it ain't leaking on you. Lay that right on top of that plate. It don't take a whole lot. And that right there will hold that everything down under the brine. That there's what you want. See how everything's down under the brine? They might be a corner of a grape leaf sticking up a little bit or something, but pretty much everything is under the brine. And even on them corners of the grape leaves, I'll take and punch them down there. They'll usually bind against the edge of that crock and stay under there. May not be necessary, but it'll just make for a. It won't be. It'll be less of a chance of anything going wrong. And I don't like to have my hands in that water much either. But that's it. And we can go up to 21 days. And years ago, old people used to. Well, everybody at that time. They had to pickle their beans and corn and cabbage like this and pickles cucumbers and they'd set these crocs in their spring house and they'd just leave them in there and they'd just go out there to they'd just go out there at the croc 
I've heard Aunt Ruby talk about it plenty of times. Just go out there at the crock, take a rag off and uncover it, dip out the food you wanted for that meal, cover it back up and go to the house with it. So this is an age old way of preservation and I really like the taste of it and enjoy doing it a whole lot. Since my rubber band broke, I'm gonna, it's the second one, one broke earlier this morning. They ain't hardly big enough for this big crock. They work good on the churns, but not on this big crock. So I'm gonna take the two that broke. I'm gonna tie them together. Make me a long one for this crock right here. Make sure that thing's good and snug because you do not want it to coming off sometime. And maybe even jerking that rag off when you ain't around and risk something getting down in there. All it takes is one little gnat to ruin you, ruin your crock. So you have to be real careful. I don't know if this is going to be much longer than the time I tie these knots in it. Then I believe that'll work. Now it's a little longer. And I believe that might work. So make sure there ain't nothing in there. This time of year, when you got everything getting ripe, there's plenty of old gnats around. Try to keep them run out of the house, but once in a while one will get in. Let's see if we can get this on here without breaking it again or it pulling it loose. Just like that, real nice and easy. Keep your fingers under that rubber band. The reason I like using these rubber bands, you can use a piece of twine just fine, but reason I like using these rubber bands is they just hold real tight and they're easy to deal with. There ain't no chance of a nowhere that nothing can crawl up and under there. They hold everything so tight and that's what you want. That's what you've got to have. But a piece of twine works fine. They've done that for years. That thing's sealed off all the way around. That's nice and tight. Keep it clean. Now we'll just set our crock over in the back side of the dining room where it's cool and just let it set. We'll look in on it about every day, make sure everything's all right. If there's any skimming that needs to be skimmed off, we'll do that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get our little crock of kraut here. Take a cover off of it, just like that. Take out my weights. out my weights and my saucer I just done that last night I like I said I wasn't gonna go out and get grape leaves so I just uh, I just put that in there like that till morning get some grape leaves and finish it up I like to get nothing up on the sides of my crock when I'm doing this, but you can see down in there. I hope you can tell, but it's a it's already making its own water, see? Can you see that see that water in there? It's already making its own water. Now we just gonna put our grape leaves down in there. Line it good. Hold everything down. And also, them grape leaves, they've got tannins in them. And what that does is it keeps, it keeps them, it keeps whatever you're pickling crunchy, firm. Them tannins does. And I've tried some of them pickles we made, and they, they're staying crunchy and good, so it works it works like it's supposed to. Just like that. Two little more spots there. It needs to be covered. Right over to the edge of the crock. Just like that.
Now we're gonna put our little saucer back down there. Put our crock weights back in there. Thankful for them. And that ought to be enough to do the job. Keep that kraut down in the, like it's supposed to be. And it'll start working. Now we're gonna put our, put our cloth over it there. And this cloth's way too big. This is what this is, a pillar case is what it is. But be careful because you'll put, put pressure on that. Just like that. Tighten that baby up. This is a good, simple way to preserve, but you have to be real precise. And you have to take the necessary pains or it won't work right and you'll, you'll lose what you're trying to do. You can't, you can't skip a step or short it in no way. If you do, well, you'll lose it and you won't have nothing. Now that one's ready to set back. Over here in the dining room here against this, against this <coughs> northwest wall is about the coolest place we got to put these beans and this kraut. So I set them over here against this wall, and it's where Mother always worked hers off, and it's a good place. If you're real easy, real easy, you can carry crock and just be real easy with it. I'm going to leave a room behind it for air to get through there. Take our pepper here, get them out of our water we put them in last night, that ice water. Drop one in the floor, you gotta do that every time, seems like. There they are in the salt water. Let me get them out now. Now this is our sweet peppers here. And I think what I'm going to do with them is the ones that's... I hate to waste that salt water, but there ain't much we can do with it, I don't reckon. What I'm going to do is these big peppers, too big to go in a pint jar. I'm going to cut them up in rings and make, make rings out of them. Dadgone hot banana pepper got mad at me. I want you to look what a face.